Hey everyone, in this video we show you how to grow two cool varieties of squash in containers. One of these is so small, you could even grow them on a small balcony. Let's get started with seed sowing. Our first squash is a super cool variety known as spaghetti squash. Its flesh turns into spaghetti-like strands once it is cooked. For both varieties in this video, we will link the seed company's details in the description. To start the seed, we used our tried and tested method of filling trays with damp coir. Squash is really versatile in that it can be started in trays or planted directly into the ground, so choose whichever suits you best. We used trays so we could get a head start on the summer veg and sowed them in winter. For large seed, the general rule is to plant the seed into holes double the height of that seed. The seed were then covered with the coir, pressed flat with an identical tray and finished off with a layer of vermiculite. We used the exact same method for our second variety, a cute mini pumpkin called Weeby Little. The seeds in this instance were a bit smaller, so we could use seed trays with smaller cells. The pumpkins shared this tray with some artichoke seed. Both trays were kept inside the greenhouse for a month or so until spring arrived. Overhead misters were used to keep the trays damp. After a few weeks, the seedlings had popped up. The mini pumpkins took a little while longer to emerge, but eventually appeared. Germination is usually much faster for squash started during the warmer months. At this time, we started fertilizing the seedlings. A really easy way to do this is to get a handy nozzle like this and use an old bottle filled with a diluted liquid fertilizer. Do this once a week to encourage robust seedling growth. If you like what you've seen so far, check out the description for your copy of our squash production guide. With every video, we share free infographics and ebooks so you can keep all this information on hand and build up your own library of vegetable production guides. We would also appreciate every like, comment and subscription to help spread our videos to every budding vegetable gardener. In the early spring after the threat of frost had passed, the seedlings were transferred to larger pots in the vegetable garden. We filled them with our favourite mixture of well-composted manure with a handful of slow-release fertiliser. Slow-release fertilisers like this are made up of a core of nutrients, which is covered by a resin coating that regulates nutrient release. This means we only need to fertilise once at the beginning of the season, and don't need to worry about nutrients leaching or wasting. Whatever your soil choice, make sure it is fertile and able to retain enough moisture. In the vegetable garden, we decided to grow the spaghetti squash up along a trellis to save floor space. We installed the wire trellis and then put the pots along each side. Some of these seedlings were also planted into larger mixed containers. The weeby little pumpkins were grown in smaller bags and were also added to some mixed containers. Wherever you decide to grow your squash, make sure there is full sun throughout the day. Also, don't overcrowd your plants. It can worsen any disease or pest infestation that might arise. Overhead sprinkler irrigation was used to water the squash. If you can, use drip irrigation. The large leaves can keep the sprinkler water from reaching the root zone as the plants mature. Drip irrigation can also help prevent powdery mildew infestations by helping to keep the leaves dry. If you can't avoid overhead irrigation, try select powdery mildew resistant squash varieties. All squash plants are monoecious. This means the male and female reproductive organs are found on different flowers on the same plant. A male flower will only contain pollen producing anthers, while the female flowers have the pollen receptive stigmas. This means unless you want to hand pollinate every flower, you need the help of pollinators. Luckily, the flowers do the hard work and attract pollinators themselves, and it is unlikely you will need to do any hand pollination. We noticed many ants and bees helping out with the pollination. Because only the female flowers will grow a fruit, you can make good use of the male flowers and eat them in many tasty dishes. With the onset of summer, the pumpkins quickly flourished and the spaghetti squash soon started climbing up the trellis. Fruitlets also soon appeared. This variety was really impressive. 
we didn't need any additional support at all for the aerial fruit. We were also treated with some off-type squash, including patty pans and zucchinis. The weeby little pumpkins stayed small and compact. You can see how they would be the perfect variety to grow on a small balcony. So, if you have a very small outside spot, definitely consider mini varieties like the weeby little pumpkins. If you are wondering how to test for ripeness, gently stick your fingernail into the flesh of the pumpkins. If you leave an indentation, then the squash is not yet ripe. You will also notice the flesh become much brighter in colour as they mature, and the stem attaching the squash to the plant will become browner. To harvest the squash, use a sharp set of secateurs and snip away at the stem. That's how easy it is to grow your own squash at home in containers. Before you go, remember your copy of our ebook detailing these steps in a picture-filled squash production guide. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment and subscribe so we can continue to share our green-fingered tips. With that, we say goodbye and we will see you in the next video.